Hello everyone. This is a video tutorial for Embedded Systems Module 6. These are the important topics in this module. Through this video, we will discuss in brief about Internet Enabled Systems. We will cover these points through this video. Introduction to Internet Enabled System, Internet, Internet Application and Internet Security. Introduction Internet Enabled System Some very different types of distributed embedded system are rapidly emerging, which are Internet Enabled Embedded System and Internet Appliances. It provides a rich environment for non-real-time interaction. That means, Internet is not well suited to the real-time tasks that are the bread and butter of embedded computing but it does provide a rich environment for non-real-time interaction. Internet The Internet Protocol IP is the fundamental protocol on the Internet. It provides connectionless packet-based communication. So basically, Internet Protocol is used for connection and to establish communication between the networks or modes. Connectionless in the sense that these are stateless because the endpoints have no protocol defined way to remember where they are in a conversation of message exchanges. Information appliances that use the internet are rapidly becoming another use of IP in embedded computing. Next point, it is an internet working standard. That is, basically, Internet is a network of networks that are based on many underlying hardware technologies. Hence, it is called an Internet Working Standard. An Internet packet will travel over several different networks from source to destination. The IP allows data to flow seamlessly through these networks from one end user to another. That is, the IP first establishes connection and then the data flows seamlessly from one end user to another. So this is a protocol utilization in internet communication. Basically here, the node A information is sent to the node B using the internet protocol. So here it says, IP works at the network layer. Through this figure, we can just conclude that for exchanging messages or info, node A is like consider an example. If node A wants to exchange messages with node B, so the node A's application data traverses through all the layers till it reaches the network layer where the IP routes the packets to the desired destination that is the node B. So basically information transfer is done between the nodes using the IP protocol. This is what discussed through these points. We will read it. When node A wants to send data to node B, the application's data that is, the data that is received in the application layer passes through several layers of the protocol stack to send to the IP. IP creates packets for routing to the destination, which are then sent to the data link and physical layers. A node that transmits data among different types of networks is known as a router. We have already studied about routers, hubs, switches. So basically, a router transmits data among different types of networks. In general, a packet may go through several routers to get to its destination. At the destination, the IP layer provides data to the transport layer and ultimately the receiving application. This is the IP packet structure. 
So the IP packet, packet structure is divided into two parts, header and data payload. So date, header is again divided as version, header length, service type, etc. So we'll go in just a little detail. Version. Version indicates the format of internet header. It is of 4 bit length. Header length. It points to the beginning of the data. It is of also 4 bit length. Service type. Provides an indication of abstract parameters of the quality of service desired. Total length. It provides the it provides the length of the data gram. Identification. It is the value by sender to assemble the fragments of the data gram. Flags. It has various control flags value. Fragment offset. Fragment offset has a value where fragment belongs in datagram. It is of 13 bits. Time to live. Time to live is of 8 bit length. It is the maximum time the datagram is allowed to remain in the internet system. Protocol. It indicates the next level protocol used in the data portion. Header checksum. It is used to check errors in the header only. Source address that is from where the information is to be sent. The address of that source is the source address. Destination address is the address of the destination. Options and padding. That is, it is options and padding is of variable length. Then the data payload section, it contains all the information, all the necessary data, etc. So, the header and data payload are both of variable length. The maximum total length of the header and data payload is 65,535 bytes. IP works at the network layer. That does not guarantee a packet is delivered to its destination and may arrive out of order which is referred to as best effort routing. That is here it is said that even if the internet protocol is used to connect between nodes but if a node A sends data to node B, node A cannot confirm whether that sent information is received by the node B. So that is, using IP, we cannot get an acknowledgement from node B. The data routes, the, the data is routed and then it may change quickly with subsequent packets being routed along very different paths with different delays. Real-time performance of IP can be hard to predict. The internet also provides Higher level services built on top of the IP such as transmission control protocol. So as we learned about one drawback of IP is that it does not give any acknowledgement. So to ensure that the data is received by the another end, we need a reliable connection. It provides a connection oriented service that ensures that data arrive in the appropriate order and it uses an acknowledgement protocol to ensure that packets arrive. So this connection oriented service is said about TCP that is transfer control protocol. So using TCP and IP we can get an acknowledgement and also a connection oriented service. Internet service stack. So internet service stack is divided into three as seen in this figure. So IP lies below TCP and UDP. IP lies in the network layer. 
TCP, UDP lies in the transport layer above network layer. FTP, HTTP, SMTP, Telnet, SNMP. These are the protocols in the application layer. It shows the internet protocol stack shows the relationships between IP and higher level internet services. TCP is used to provide file transport protocol for batch file transfers, hypertext transfer protocol for World Wide Web services, simple mail transfer protocol for email and telnet for virtual terminals. Why TCP is used is that it is connection oriented. It provides reliable connection protocol that is used to provide the following applications that is FTP for batch file transfers etc. A separate transport protocol that is user datagram protocol is used as a basis for the network management services provided by the simple network management protocol. So if one wants to establish a connection less oriented service using the IP, they can use user datagram protocol which is a connectionless network that works on top of IP and ad in addition to that in UDP sender constructs a datagram packet and addresses it with a port number. Internet application The internet provides a standard way for an embedded system to act in concert with other devices and with users such as Firstly, one of the earliest internet enabled embedded systems was the laser printer. High end laser printers often use IP to receive print jobs from post machines. So that is simply understood. Portable internet devices can display web pages, read email, and synchronize calendar information with remote computers. So portable devices can work in short, medium or long range. So for some examples for portable internet devices are um, Bluetooth, RFID, Wi-Fi, WiMAX, etc. A home control system allows the home owner to remotely monitor and control home cameras, lights and so on. So basically in a home control system, IoT technologies are used that uses internet. IP provides a way for both special purpose and standard programs such as web browsers to talk to the embedded system. Special purpose in the sense they may be employed to fix a specific issue or to carry out some special purposes. Now, uh, example. So, this is a video camera that uses an internet application. So, internet cameras allow you to connect to the internet via a broadband network and remotely view live video from any web browser anywhere in the world. So, once the system is set up, the only need is an internet access. So in the following slides, we can go through the working of this internet video camera. So now we will discuss through this figure how the working happens. And if any points are to be referred, the following slides can be looked upon. So basically, the HTTP server runs a page containing a piece of Java code. Okay, so what? HTTP server returns a page containing a piece of Java code that acts as an applet to talk to device. That Java code, that Java code running on web browser, running on the web browser requests an image from the quick cam server on the quick cam java nano kernel 
the Java Nano Kernel device, this one, accepts image from the Quick Cam, sorry, Quick Cam, performs transformation and returns data to the web browser. So this is the working of a internet video camera. So it is an internet appliance that runs Java to provide useful services. Java Cam is an internet accessible video camera that was designed as a demonstration of a Java Nano kernel. Java Cam was built from a Connectix Quick Cam, a widely available low cost video camera for PCs that can send and receive data on a standard PC parallel port. The HTTP server returns a page containing a piece of Java code, as we discussed, that act as an applet to talk to the device. That Java code running on the web browser requests an image from the QuickCam server on the QuickCam. Now then, the Java Nano kernel, which grabs an image from the QuickCam, performs required transformation on that image and returns the data to the applet running on the web browser. The Quick Cam server communicates with the camera over a parallel port and it provides three basic functions. The functions are QC, that is Quick Cam underscore initialize function, and Quick Cam underscore send command. It is used to send commands to the camera. The third command, Quick Cam underscore take picture function, returns a picture. Last topic is Internet Security. Internet Security is defined as a process to create rules and actions to protect against attacks over the Internet. So Internet Security involves browser security and the World Wide Web but also in uh, network security. So internet security is needed, very much needed, because without it, financial transactions and communication between the business would be accessible and personal information would be subject to violation. So we said that internet security is defined as a process to create rules. So some rules that are uh, laid upon can be making sure that internet connection is secure so that may be one rule another can be keeping private privacy settings on etc so there are basically many rules applied in internet security and some actions that violate the internet security are like packet capturing phishing denial of service attack etc embedded system security is a strategic approach to protecting software running on embedded systems from attack attacks on the embedded system can destroy not only information but also the physical devices connected to the embedded processor so as we can say for example recently there have been number of well-documented attacks on embedded devices ranging from hacked vehicle and the theft and control systems to hijacked printers that sent copies of documents to hackers computer so through that the hackers can hack information from secured devices or secured sites so hence internet security is very important for our information and for our devices to be safe. Some previous year questions. Depict four reasons to build network based embedded system. So here we come to an end of this video lecture. So here is what we learned about internet and how it can be used by embedded computing systems. Internet protocol, which is the fundamental protocol on the internet. Protocol utilization in internet communication, IP packet structure, internet applications, and internet security.
थैंक यू